Thank you, thank you. All right, so my topic is about 1% uh, better. And I want to start by really emphasize our world has become a very incredible, complex, um, unpredictable world, right? And as many of you, I don't know how many of you actually come to Shanghai before the lockdown. I personally, 87 days in my compound, right? So, so this world has really become a, a world that you know, we cannot comprehend uh, in the old way. Now, the chart I show you here is very interesting. This shows how fast uh, technologies are evolving. Now, I'm going to just pick a few uh, apps perhaps uh, you are familiar with. Two decades ago, it took both Twitter and Facebook around five years to reach their 100 million users. A decade ago, WeChat, which uh, later I work on uh, in Tencent, only take one year and two months. Now, how many of you are using ChatGPT? Raise hands. Two months and you are among the 100 million users in that two months. So the essence of our business really stayed the same, which is the desire to create the value, the service, the product, uh, 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 for creating greater good. But it is really the how that set the leaders apart. So, you know, traditionally company that undergo multi-year grand strategy can no longer last. It can only be successful if it's back with uh, agility, self-disrupted uh, uh, ideas, and the check and balance. Now, I work in IT, so monolithic IT system, it's a, it's a big word, monolithic IT system are now being challenged by the modular, composite architecture, which allow a better interconnectivity and cheaper and faster to make changes. Also, because of the, thanks to the, uh, uh, the club, right, the idea of uh, the talk today is about personal journey, about the APEC, right? So really, for the past 25 years of my career, I see an increasing trend of single-minded domain experts are now being paled by uh, uh, multidisciplinary, sorry about my English, <laughs> multidisciplinary talents uh, in the corporate uh, environment. And this is uh, really an a, a, a important point for you to take on. Now, a little bit of myself, right? So I mentioned about uh, being a professional 20, 25 years. And I'm really fortunate in the past 25 years, I've been able to be part of uh, digital evolution uh, in some of the uh, great companies. Now, with the title of CIO, you may think I'm as geeky uh, as a computer science geek uh, should be. No, I'm, not, I, I'm far from it. So when I was a kid, I was dream of being, sorry, one more click. I was dream of being an architect where I can, you know, really draw and build houses, you know, build houses. Still, I mean, till today, I, 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 I remodel myself uh, in my home. Um, and then, but later, later I entered into computer uh, graphics uh, at engineering school. And at NYU, I actually had interactive media background. Uh, in a School of Arts. So later I work uh, with a few companies, uh, happen to be led by some of the richest men in the world. Bill Gates, you see Wang Jianling, who was used to be the richest man in China. Bernard Arnault, uh, we call him uh, Michel Bernard Arnault, who is now uh, uh, also the richest man uh, between him, you know, uh, Elon Musk, et cetera, depends on the stock market. Uh, he is uh, uh, the current LVMH group uh, chairman, uh, which Sephora is part of. And I also work for Ponyma, right? So Pony is, uh, ah, there is a text. Uh, Pony is a, 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 a Tencent uh, a chairman. So, I was really wonderful to be able to uh, participate, learn, 
and contribute to some of the uh, uh, digital transformation among those companies, um, including the current uh, re uh, uh, beauty retailers. And before Sephora, I work at Nike. You see that is the, the Nanjing East Row, uh, uh, House of Innovation 001. Uh, I was part of it. Uh, a lot of wonderful experience, but hard learnings. So as part of uh, what I'm sharing, uh, you're going to hear uh, some of the examples from these companies. Now, as a company, uh, I'm sorry, as a person, uh, you know, I'm very competitive. I really like to seek for thrill. Uh, I live in Taipei, New York City, Seattle, and now Shanghai. So really enjoy traveling sometimes for work and also tra travel with my uh, families. And really, at the end of the day, you know, when it comes to office, it's really that, that kind of continuous journey of improvement and be able to help others, you know, my teammates, the people who are in the company, to really unleash uh, their potential. That is what keeps me going. So, now, back to the topic. Uh, enough about Jeffrey. Back to the topic, uh, you may ask, what does it take for those companies uh, to reach APEX, A-P-E-X, right? So in fact, none of them would really consider they are already at the top yet, right? This is a very competitive uh, uh, environment. However, uh, in a recent survey, 82% uh, of the global top company CEO think uh, they, there is an urgency for them to even move faster and even move in a more cohesive way and they really revolu revolutionize themselves, right? So those company CEO, if you further ask them, really they are only 16% feel like, like they are doing uh, successfully or on the tr right track of doing successfully. So, uh, you know, my day-to-day -day job really is being part of that thinking how we can really excel, right? Whether it's a Nike brand company or a Sephora, you know, beauty retailer, to really create that greater value for our customer and for the business. And this is far more than just the technology capability, right? Far more than say, hey, we need a new CRM system or we need a, a, a brand new post machine uh, in 400 uh, retail stores. However, I do uh, observe uh, a few common things. Number one, the company really need to uh, have the uh, commitment from top down. Right, so this is what we're going to do, and this is the objective we want to achieve, right? So expectation setting is the next important uh, common thing I see on the leading companies. And also, super important, how a company can leverage the uh, better ways of working and break the, uh, we call the organizational silo. And through, you know, a better agile, incremental, step-by-step -step improvement every day. So I like this chart a lot, right? So when you think about 1% better every day, it doesn't sound much, but mathematically it tells you, you will be 38 times better of yourself a year from now if you are only 1% better every day. So obviously, right, so if you are less than 1% one better, one every day become worse and a lot worse. So this kind of brings up my, um, my topic really is the agile mindset uh, becoming incredibly uh, important to contribute to the success, not only at the corporate level, but to the personal level. And more importantly, because of the you know, increasing complexity and everything, I want to quickly uh, introduce term, a couple new terms to you. Uh, I'm looking, uh, watch out my time here. The first term is called VOCA. I don't know how many of you heard about this term, right? So VOCA stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. 
It's used to describe the situation of a constant and predictable change that is now the norm in the business caused by disrupted technology, competition, geographical tensions, and in the microeconomy uh, uh, context. Right, so we all heard about the, the collapse of the US banking and credit system due to the subprime mortgage, uh, you know, erupted with the Lehman Brothers, now the uh, trade war between US and China and all that. So any of these disrupted event, and often unpredictable event, would have a pile on the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and the ambiguity. So just when we thought, that we have a good handle on the VOCA. Now, COVID come, right? So COVID came along and took everyone a surprise because it was a real wake up call that many companies thought that we could have a get uh, a handle of a situation, but in, fra uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, many companies were unprepared, and uh, government as well, and uh, including individual. So now here comes the second term. So the second term is Bonnie, right? The acronym for brittle, anxious, nonlinear, and incomprehensible. Now, pardon my uh, uh, accent, because it's not a cute little rabbit that you think you, you heard from me. <laughs> so it tells us our world isn't just complex. It's so fragile and it's sometimes uh, hard to make sense out of it. So I'm going to uh, uh, quickly uh, give you a couple examples. So for example, when the COVID came, we had to shut down about a quarter of our store or 80 stores because we, the lacking uh, of uh, staff. Uh, as well as uh, it took four times longer lead time uh, to, for the, uh, the goods uh, to import and ship to our warehouses. Right, so all these were uh, underprepared uh, to face such a, a, a um, situation. Then, you know, the anxiety, right? So we all heard about uh, uh, previously the Huawei ban in, uh, in US because of the rising concern of national security. Now, on the other hand, guess what? There is another uh, uh, sales restriction on the NVIDIA uh, GPU, right? And you heard, all heard about it because of the raising toward the Gen AI computing power, which is now becoming a national uh, 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 agenda. So also the cause and effect dynamics are also shift, right? So no longer uh, follow a predictable pattern and sometimes it, it happens simultaneously. So the non-linear part uh, that speak for itself devastating war in Ukraine, Israel, um, the uh, rising tension with uh, North Korea, and uh, also in the South China Sea. So finally, the incomprehensible, right? So just give you a, a very quick example. Uh, just when many companies put down a relatively positive sales forecast last year, 2023, because we thought, oh, great, you know, COVID is done after March, everything is flourish. But Nobody anticipated the retail traffic did not bounce back. So that, you know, many, many companies, executives, everyone was asking what happened. So why, right? So you can simply say, oh yeah, the China consumer spending, uh, 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 you know, it's a, a lot more uh, conservative. Why? Oh, is there an inflation rate? No. Well, because of the housing market. Well, why there is a housing market now, but rather than you know, three years ago? Right? So then, then when you start digging into it, it, be, it becomes a huge snowball uh, piled uh, on the uh, convoluted uh, issues. Right? Ultimately, you can say, well, you know, maybe uh, um, the the traditional way of sustaining the high growth of China GDP, you know, 11%, 40% a year, is no longer sustainable. Should it be a, you know, a instrumental uh, issue for a Chinese government to look at, right? So it alone become a huge topic and many of us, including myself, cannot comprehend. So 
quickly wrap up the vacuum, uh, sorry, Vulcan, <laughs> VUCA emphasized the need for adaptability and flexibility. It's looking inward. Bonnie, on the other hand, is more looking outwards. So while the volume and intensity of the pressure can be overwhelming, nevertheless, it's really vital for us to stay composure. It's about managing the complexity, ambiguity, and anxiety, even sometimes our own sanity, right? So without letting any situation dictate our action nor cloud our judgments. Now, you may ask, despite all these challenges, what should we do? Life is a journey. And one who say positively, stay positively, always learn, can learn from it. So I would like to share with you three important uh, um, aspects uh, that I personally uh, learned uh, in my life. The first one, disruption can pave the way for innovation. So when traditional industry gets shake up, it's usually when the groundbreaking ideas surfaced, right? So really think outside of the box. One of the company I work at, Nike. For the longest, Nike did two things really well, and only two things. What are those two things? Make good shoes and tell good stories, right? Just do it, blah, blah, blah. Now, however, there, there was something not right. It was because 100% of their business model was uh, building upon the wholesale model. Wholesale means, you know, I'm a wholesaler, I have 8,000 stores in China, I buy the goods from you, you ship the goods to me, yada yada, right? So what Nike didn't like about this model was they had no connectivity or relationship with the customer like you. So who bought their shoes? Why did they buy it? Why did they return it? Why they don't like it? You know, and what shoes are they going to buy next, right? So none of this inside was available to Nike. Well, thanks to the digital uh, capability through the e-commerce and the mobile app and mini program, Nike started a top-down strategy called direct-to-consumer, right? So I was part of the first hire in China say, okay, Let's uh, create something that we can connect the consumer and sell the goods and serve the customer better, right? So through mini programs, through app, nowadays uh, uh, Nike as a brand has a wealth of information about you. Well, of course, you know, privacy issue alone, that is pretty much all other companies are trying to do. As the result, 10, 10 years later, as of today, 100% sales wholesale as of today, 40% coming from the direct to consumer, either online or offline. 60% you know, dropped. Okay, uh, next one. I want to call out the feedback is a gift. Uh, I really think this is important, not only for company, but also for uh, me and you personally. Because when you ask your stakeholder, your faculty members, your member, your friends, your peer, your coworkers, they are going to share with you the feedback that sometimes you know more more valuable than you think. So just when everyone uh, was trying to catch up with uh, uh, Zara, who was really good on connecting a seamless point of sales to the supply chain to the factory, right? in the uh, uh, fast fashion industry. Now, there was a disruptor come, up, come along, Shein. So Shein is a digital native company who collect all the information you browse, you know, you, 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 you like, you comment it, and put all this information directly to uh, their AI engine where it creates a predictable 700 pieces to 1,000 pieces of markup on their website to see who or what products uh, are getting uh, some uh, popularity in order to scale down in their factory, right? That factory can be in Shenzhen or Guangdong or somewhere, right? So this is a completely disrupting model because they know how to collect the feedback effectively from the customers, from uh, the end users. Now, the next one, 
I just want to show you quickly the grand opening day of what we call the Sephora Store of the Future. It is actually on Nanjing East Road, uh, Nanjing Donglu Buxing Jie. So do spend time to walk in. Why? In this store, traditionally, it's easier to collect feedback, you know, and, and, and uh, consumer behavior and the big data online. But this is the first store in Sephora. We are collecting a similar uh, your preference, your behavior through, you know, skin diagnostic, through, you know, uh, NFC technology where you pick up a bottle uh, of lotion, uh, immediately the big screen show that detail about that lotion, and at the same time, guess what? Now we know you have pick up that lotion. So all that data go back to our big data warehouse, the CDP, all of a sudden Jeffrey is tech one more plus one, you know, lotion about the sunscreen, sunblock. So, so, so this is the first attempt where we are trying to bring the digital technology also into the brick and mortar retail. Because only by doing that, we can serve the customer holistically and better. Okay, final. Stay agile and uh, adaptivity is the key. And this is so important, I have to say it twice. Stay agile and adaptivity is the key. Why? You need to have a vision and mission, true, also your personal dream. However, these are like the campus guiding you uh, uh, from the bottom of the uh, foothill to the top of the mountain, right? You are climbing. But in reality, with VUCA and Bonnie, your path is going to be full of fog. You are not going to see through clearly how do you get point A to point B. Therefore, not only personally, but also in all the big corporations, when we develop software, when we develop mini program or app, we are now adopt the agile development model. In Chinese, when I work at Tencent, it's the term called 摸着石头过河. And what does it mean? Because you cannot see through how to get through. Therefore, you have to hold on a piece of rock firmly before you move your next step, and then repeat, and repeat, and repeat again, right? So uh, I'm going to skip <laughs> Uh, Microsoft, but uh, I have uh, some interesting idea of before and after, right? So Microsoft, I work on Windows, and uh, I hope some of you still know what is Windows. <laughs> uh, but uh, 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 it was a huge revolution within Microsoft as an organization to transform from the five to six years waterfall development model to every two month development, agile development model. Huge, huge improvement because it was impacted by cutting surprise of the uh, iPad-like form factor as well as the touch screen. That was back in uh, 2007. We, in Microsoft, we did not know how to respond to the touch screen, right, as an example. All right, WeChat, okay, very quick idea. So WeChat is an underdog is a winner in many uh, aspects, right? So social, chatting, real time, and all that. However, they, they see the uprising of the content uh, 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 live streaming and the short video. So uh, ByteDance, right, the leader in this area, which is the maker of uh, Douyin and TikTok, uh, uh, is really leading a machine-recommended uh, algorithm that give you a, a content recommendation. Now, WeChat did not have uh, the initial content to really make the machine learn in an effective way. So, taking this uh, agility and adaptivity example, uh, uh, Alan Chen, Zhang Xiaolong, who is the uh, founder of the WeChat team, uh, went back to the drawing board and said, okay, what are we good at? Oh, we have, you know, hundreds of millions of consumers with their social friends. So, so they invented a new way of showing what your friends is watching to as the initial seeding to reach that mass, uh, critical mass of the content. And then they add uh, onto the uh, uh, machine uh, recommended, machine-based uh, uh, content recommendation. Long story short, uh, another really interesting example there. Uh, so, what does all this matters to you? 
because you as a student, and sorry, some are not, <laughs> you want to stand out because you want to be successful. And most importantly, you can. Why? Because I was one of you sitting there 20 years ago, and when you follow your heart, when you take the right approach, when you listen, active listening, taking the feedback, uh, you know, not only you're among the brightest students uh, on the planet, but also, you know, you are receiving the feedback and then adjust you, uh, how you think, how you act, and ultimately, you will succeed on what you want. So my final advice, stay curious, stay learning, equip yourself with this multidisciplinary leadership, while be prepared, be agile, be adaptive along the journey, and make the 1% better every day. So buckle up, enjoy the ride.